can't see hiding or hair of him. This road's gonna wash out any minute. We've gotta go. And if can it be hard? world of Disney, A Little Dog Lost. Ever since man began the long journey from the Stone Age cave to the Space Age capsule. Dogs have been his faithful companions and willing helpers. Whenever he wanted certain things done, if nature had neglected to provide him with a proper dog, man himself developed a special breed for the job. So today, there are about 150 different varieties of dogs, all sizes and for all purposes. But every dog, whether he's big, little or somewhere in between has two basic instincts. The first is devotion to man and the second to do the thing he was born and bred to do. Now what happens to a dog when his bond with man is broken and only the instincts remain? Well that's what we're going to find out now in this story titled Little Dog Lost. He was a Welsh corgi not an ordinary kind of dog, and he certainly wasn't going to lead an ordinary kind of life. But it all began in a rather ordinary kind of way, in a cardboard box supplied by the pet shop. Since he was to be the children's first puppy, naturally, he had to come as a surprise. Oh, boy! Boy, isn't he a Get rascal, right. though? Yeah. Tell me, keep him? Sure you can. Go ahead, take him out of the box, bud. Oh, gee. <laughs> and so he became a member of a typical family. And like all puppies, he came to know his people first by the touch of their hands. May I have him? Buddies would hold him just a little too tight, although they meant well enough. Katie's would be soft and gentle. Look how soft he is. Mother's hands would give him food. But right now, the dish puzzled him. He knew all about milk. It was just that his own mother served it differently. The dish towel, though, represented something more familiar. That's a good boy. Yes, that's good, isn't it? This isn't just a mongrel. He's a pedigreed Welsh corgi. In Wales, they're used for herding cattle. You've got yourself a fine dog there. There. He's a pretty color, isn't he? Sort of like Taffy Candy. Let's call him Candy. <laughs> All right. Candy it is. Where's he gonna sleep? In the cellar. Keeping the puppy in the cellar at first is a standard procedure, and everybody knew that. Everybody except one small dog and two small children. He's stuck in his sleeve. Poor Candy. Hey! Come on, kids, get to bed. But, Dad, he's crying. All puppies carry on the first night in a new place. He'll get used to it. I just hope we can. I should have done this in the first place. Now, let's see. How did you ever get caught in here? But there. 
This ought to quiet him down. But what's that for? That'll keep him warm, like his mama. What's the clock for? He's used to having his brothers and sisters around him. The ticking will keep him company. All right, now, that's all. Let's go. Let's all go to bed. Come on, Katie. See you in the morning, Candy. Right now, his life seemed bright with promise. There was no hint of future shadows. When Candy was four months old and had learned certain rules of conduct, he won a promotion. The corner behind the stove became his castle, and he considered himself king of the kitchen. Nothing that passed was missed by his observing eye. Of course, whenever food was involved, observing wasn't enough. His personal supervision was required. But he should have known that in the kitchen, queens hold sway. Kings, all too often, are only in the way. Oh. Now look what you've done. What happened, Liz? Oh, this darn puppy. He's always under my feet. Go on, get back to your corner. All right, he was sorry. He'd try to remember. But he also knew that in this house, harsh words were always followed by forgiveness. Besides, he'd just noticed something. Someone had left the door to the laundry open. He'd been punished for this before, but he just couldn't help himself. It was regrettable, but Candy was the victim of a vice. He chewed. In fact, he was a compulsive chewer. Jackpot. First up was one of Buddy's socks. Then, for plenty of chewing room, why not the center of the kitchen? Oh, yes, mustn't forget Father's pajamas. Candy was never choosy about his chewing. He tried to include something from every member of the family. Next, Katie's nightgown. Oh, and of course, we mustn't forget Mother. should do it. Nothing now but to chew and chew and chew. prank, but out of it were to come many strange happenings that would change the whole course of Candy's life. And all because of a bruise. Will you get out of my way? Candy, I told you to go back to your corner. Now you've got to learn to stay out of my way. Go on, get back there. I will not have a destructive dog in this house. The cellar's where you belong, you bad dog. Now go on, get in there. I don't want to hurt you, Candy, but you've got to learn to obey. Now, you just stay there a while. To Mother, it was just a little discipline. But to Candy, it was a terrifying experience he would remember for the rest of his life. Psychologists would say he was suffering a trauma. 
Now his castle had become a prison, and the enemy guarded the gate. All through the night, it would attack again and again. Next day, there was to be a family outing, and Mother had that typical feeling she'd forgotten something. This time, she had. Candy! Oh, poor Candy! Come here. Come here. I'm so sorry. I forgot all about you last night. I didn't mean to leave you there all night, no. Here, bud. You take Candy outside, quickly. Mom, can we take Candy to Grandpa's? Yes, we can take him along this time. This would be Candy's first visit to Grandfather's farm. And ordinarily, he liked nothing better than a chance to ride in the family car. But this morning, he was strangely quiet, although only Katie seemed to notice it. It's a flat, all right. Oh, dear. I knew we shouldn't take the back road. Can we take Candy for a walk? OK. But don't go far and take your coats. You want to play, Candy? Come on, let's go for a walk. Hey, bud. I need you here. <coughs> a kind nature doesn't permit an animal to brood for long. Even the most sensitive will respond to the stimulus of the moment. Come on, Candy. Come on. And now a chance for a run and scramble along the water's edge couldn't help but lift the puppy's spirits. But it would be Candy's last carefree moment for a long time. It's beginning to rain. This road gets pretty messy when it gets wet. I think we better turn back. Come on, Cat, let's get out of the bridge. Hurry up! Get all wet. Because of the storm, instead of the usual path, Katie chose the short way up the slope. For Candy, it was a fateful choice. Although he didn't see it, somehow he sensed it was there. The same terrible enemy. <laughs>
got so wet. But Mom, Candy was right behind me. Why did he run away from me? I don't know, Katie. But don't you worry, because Dad will find him. Candy! I can't see hiding her hair of him. This road's gonna wash out any minute. We've gotta go. I leave Candy behind? We'll come back and find him just as soon as we can. More than two miles downstream, Candy finally outran his pursuer. His fear was fading now, and instinct told him to look for shelter. Well, the farther he got away from that brook, the safer he'd feel. On a high rise of ground in a secluded grove, he found an abandoned woodpile. Of course, the woodpile wasn't anything like his kitchen corner, but it would do until his people came and found him again. He couldn't know they would never be able to find him here. And so he became one of those small tragedies, a little dog lost. Four months passed, and in those months, the forest acquired a new resident whose permanent address was the old woodpile. Candy was full grown now. At first, he'd roamed openly through the countryside, searching for a friend, a scrap of food. But he'd been shouted at, shot at, kicked, and attacked by farm dogs. And so he had come to trust only himself, living by his wits, sustained by his irrepressible spirit. He'd developed a pattern for survival, and each day it was exactly the same. He was awakened by cowbells. This was the first of many sounds and signals that would guide his continuing search for food. His first stop was the Carlson farm. Same trouble, Butch. We're just getting old. We'll take it easy going back, old boy. The closing of the pasture gate was the signal for Candy's next move. This would be a long roundabout run that would eventually bring him to the Carlson farmhouse. There he would find the first course on his daily menu. When he came to the farmyard, he was always careful to stay out of sight. It was a needless caution here. Carlson was a kindly man, fond of all animals, and deeply attached to his old dog, Butch. Butch was Candy's friend, his only friend. Still, the little dog was afraid to show himself to Butch's master. He'd been hurt too many times. He couldn't know, of course, that Carlson had suffered the deepest hurt of all. Here you are, old boy. We both miss her much, don't we? Candy was polite. He never tried to hurry his friend. There was no need to. From long habit, he learned he could rely on the old dog's waning appetite. There would always be some food left.
such hospitality rated a thank you. Interrupted now by Carlson's return. Next, a passage through dangerous territory. The vineyard led to a gully, and the gully was the only safe way to get by the worst candy hater in these parts, the collie. The culvert was a shortcut to another farm where breakfast was being served. Of course, this was only chicken feed and not to his taste this morning. But he knew where there was something more substantial. Well, there was only one way to settle this argument. Sit on it. Sometimes this petty thievery led to a peck of trouble. Rufus, the terrible-tempered rooster. In Candy's morning round, he stopped at half a dozen farmhouses and covered more than 10 miles of countryside. Like all busy breadwinners, he had a standing appointment for lunch. Today, he was a little late, and of course, it never fails when you're in a hurry, a traffic jam. With a little help from the ram, he made up for the delay and arrived just a bit early at his next listening post the top of a hill overlooking a lumber mill. He would wait now for the signal. That was it. End of lunch hour at the mill. Candy knew just where the mill hands ate their lunch, and every noon at exactly this time, he arrived to clean up the leftovers. How much you got left? Cracker. Want one eight off? My old lady didn't pack much of my lunch. What's the matter? Didn't she put any more in? No, not much. Hey, wait a minute. I forgot my thermos. Whenever there were people around, Candy followed one philosophy. It's better to be careful than be kicked. But this time, he was caught off guard. Hi there, boy. Hungry? Come on, boy. I'm not gonna hurt you. Come on, boy. Here, you can have it. I'm not gonna take this sandwich away from you. Hey, Joe, look out! Why don't you look where you're going? You almost hit the dog. What dog? Well, he was here. What you have in that thermos? <laughs> it was a busy life for Candy, but very lonely. For of course he was always running away from the one thing he needed most, human companionship. And each afternoon, he would brood on the strange, aching emptiness he felt within. As a puppy, he had a puppy's affection for all. But a corgi full-grown can give its love and loyalty to only one. 
And so this was Candy's inner unknown sorrow. He was a one-man dog without a man. Each evening, it was Candy's habit to return to the Carlson house. Here, he would share Butch's dinner and a few moments of quiet companionship. But there came a night when he found the dish empty and no sign of Butch. He began to look for his old friend. At first, the fresh turned earth puzzled him, and so did the empty collar. Then the little dog began to sense the meaning of the mystery here. He understood now that his search was over. turned to summer brown, and still Candy's daily round never varied, except that he no longer stopped at the Carlson farm. Today, he spotted a windfall, a roadkill chicken. To show himself in the open was always an invitation to trouble, and this time, it wasn't long in coming. <laughs> Candy's getaway trail was pre-planned. Up ahead, there was a corgi-sized culvert, guaranteed collie-proof. Today, though, the guarantee ran out. And suddenly, he was in twice as much trouble. You're what they're after. Well, you can't stay under there. Come on out. Get up there, Jim. Come on, little dog. Come on, fella. Come on. Come on, fella. All right. That's all right. It's all right. Well, you're a pretty cute little dog. Shame on you. He had little faith in people. But the friendly words, the gentle hands, were reassuring. He decided to accept the woman's protection. As it turned out, 
The end of the chase was the end of a chapter in Candy's life. Now he would travel a different road. And if the past was a pattern, a new adventure was already waiting just around the bend. It was a long drive to the woman's farm, and her unfamiliar nearness was making Candy uneasy. The woman noticed it. You're a funny little mutt. Bet you're hungry. Well, let's see what we have in here. To Candy, food was always a powerful magnet. Perhaps it better eat first and run away later. That's all. There isn't any more. I'll get you something more to eat when we get home. As the warm afternoon wore on, Candy's fears began to fade. As a matter of fact, he was beginning to enjoy the ride. Quite often during this drowsy time of day, the reins would go slack. This was a signal to old Jim the horse that he was on his own. Now the fortunes of Candy took another unexpected turn. He sensed that something was wrong, but he didn't know what to do about it. The sight of the disappearing wagon meant nothing to him, but the purse did. Because it had carried food, it was obviously a thing of great value. hospital report said a mild concussion, and the farm woman was much more concerned about her little brown dog than the bump on her head. Well, Candy was in good hands. The trooper had found him still guarding the purse. It would take only a minute now to stop by at the hospital and leave word that the woman's pet would be kept at the local animal shelter until her recovery. And so for Candy, the future never looked brighter. And then, out of the shadows of the past, an old enemy. Hey, hey, come back here. Hey, puppy! Hey, you, come back here. Come back here. Come here, come here, boy. Somebody's dog is loose. Come here, dog. Somebody grab that dog. I got him. Here, boy. Come on, boy. Out of one predicament and into another. Now a noisy forest of people. A deserted alley was only a lull in the city's clatter. Now a shopping center, and more people. Hey, watch it! You almost 
got yourself killed. You calm down there. Here, yeah, just take it easy. Poor little fella. You lost? No collar. You're a good looking pup. How'd you like to go home with me? And you wait here while I go inside. You might belong to someone, you know. I'll be right back. Well, maybe Candy did belong to somebody now. In this new beginning, though, he was aware only that the man was familiar and could be trusted. At the Carlson farm, Candy found a time of peace and plenty he'd never known before. And day by day, his affection for Carlson grew. take time for Candy to give Carlson all the fullness of his devotion. But he well understood what the man was giving him. Comfort, companionship, food, and this warm place beside the stove. He was grateful. And he soon found a very practical way to show his gratitude. It happened the very first day he was given the run of the farm. Many times in the past, he'd watched these same cows brought in from pasture by old Butch and the man. Now he felt a compulsion to take over the job. and had trained many a cattle dog, but he never thought he'd see anything like this. The little corky, all on his own, was actually bringing the herd under control. Well, I'll be doggone. A natural healer. Of course, he'd need help to learn all of his duties, but that's where the man came in. Watch out for the heifer! Over there, by the fence! <laughs> Boy. <laughs> Once he had the herd in line, Candy knew where to take it, for this too had seen many times in the past. And so Candy became a working dog. From now on, Carlson had a valuable helper. <laughs> Good job. It was a red letter day for Candy, all right, but he did make one small mistake. After the chores, a proper farmhand always cleans up for supper. Hey, you and your dirty feet. Give me those little dirty paws, huh? Here, I'll wipe that off for you. So, boy, you drove those old cattle in. You bet you did. Now, let's see that back one. Oh, yes. We got to wipe that one off, too, while we're about it. But you really drove the cattle in today. You're a good dog. Warmed by Carlson's praise and the pride of his own great achievement, Candy's bond with the man was all but sealed now. And then... Betrayal. Hey, what's the matter with you? Come here, boy. I didn't hurt you. What's the matter with you? What are you scared of? Where are you, rascal? Are you under there, boy? 
Well, what's got into you, boy? What's the matter? Well, come on, Lord. Come on, come on, Rascal. You're not afraid of this broom, are you? Well, somebody's been after you with a broom. Poor little fella. Well, we'll do something about that now. Will you come out here and see what I'm gonna do? Now, watch this. I'm gonna throw it away. No more broom. You come over and see for yourself. Come on. The enemy had been cast out, and by the man. That much he understood. Forgiveness came quickly. inevitable that the ever-changing path of Candy's life would one day cross upon itself and so enclose a circle, a family circle. Well, hi there. Hi, bud. There's my girl. Growing like grass in the spring. Hi, babe. Hi, Bob. Guess what? What? I got a new dog. Where is he? He's up on the hill driving in the cattle. You hear him barking? Yeah. Would you like to go up and open the gate for him? Oh, boy! Come on. You run along Daddy. now. Mommy, wait for me. The boy and the girl had changed only a little through the passing months, so it was natural that Candy would recognize them at once. It was Katie who first connected a half-remembered puppy with this full-grown dog. Don't be stupid. It is. I know it is. Candy, Candy. Remember me? Oh, it is Candy. Here, Candy. Here, Candy. Come on. Come on, Candy. Come on. You, Candy. Don't you know us? Come here, Candy. Come on, Candy, Candy. All right, in a minute. Got a report all secure to the boss. I'm going to take it home. You bet we are. Grandpa, Mom. Pop, I don't see how it can be their dog. Oh, it must Candy. be. Their dog was lost under that bridge, three miles from here. You picked him up in town. Well, that doesn't matter. They think he's their dog. Wait till Dad sees him. Come on, Candy, come on. Oh, Candy, I'm so glad we found you. Mama, let's go home now and show Daddy. Go ahead, Liz. I'll finish up here. We're going home, Candy. Come on. Come on, Candy. Come on. Go on, boy. But, Grandpa, now you don't have a dog. That's all right, Katie. I can get another dog. Run along now. I know you've been lonely since Mom died. And you need a dog to keep you company. The children will get on fine without him. Kids and dogs belong together. Stop stewing, will you? ride home should have been a happy one for Katie, but it wasn't. Her troubled heart told her there was something she should do, but she couldn't decide just how it should be done.
What's the matter, Candy? Don't you feel good? You already miss Grandpa, don't you? It's all right. You'll see him again. I promise. Candy's gone. Gone? What happened? Well, we had stopped at this service station about 10 miles from the farm, and Katie just slipped him out the back. Bud was sleeping, and I didn't even miss him until we got home. Well, for Pete's sake, what did she do that for? She decided he was unhappy and ought to be with you. Well, I sure do appreciate that. But where do you suppose Candy is now? Carlson should have known, as Katie did, that Candy's love and loyalty would guide him straight back to the farm. But now, with home and happiness so very close, it took only a gust of wind to free the enemy and drive him away. All we can do tonight is just wait and see. Yes, so. Well, I'll let you know Please. if he shows up, Liz. Okay, Bob. Bye. Good night, dear. But Candy had already gone back to the homeless, lonely life of a stray. It was all that was left to him, unless he could conquer the barrier of fear that kept him from the man. He could never do it alone. Candy? Candy! Candy? Oh, Candy! The voice of the man was the one thing that could help him. Candy! He understood that if he obeyed that voice now, he would never be alone again. Candy! He would try once more. What's the matter, boy? Come on, Candy. What's holding you? Well, come on, boy. Well, what's the matter? Well, come on, boy. Come on, you rascal. Come on, Candy. Come on home. What's the matter, boy? Well, come on. Hurry home. That's a boy, Candy. You can just come and live with me for the rest of your life. Yes, you bet. It was over now and done with. All the old empty days of fear and flight. Now there was only the fullness of the bright new future. The little lost dog had come home to stay.